Mike Radich here, and I'm now joining the phone by CES MMA Bantamweight Champion, Andre Sukumta. Andre, how are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. Andre, the name of the game is really random. That's where I ask you a random question and you give me the real answer. Some of these questions are custom made just for you, and some of these questions are generic ones that I ask everyone I interview. So here's the first question. Superpower you'd love to have. Favorite movie? Oh, man. Um, The Good Dinosaur. Movie you've seen the most times? The Fire, Mickey Ward. Favorite color? Orange. Favorite guilty pleasure? I really, really can't answer that. I eat too much, man. I eat too much things I shouldn't. Go to song when you're singing in the shower? Something that has to do with NSYNC. Andre, you claimed the CES MMA Bantamweight title back on March 11th when you defeated Cody Norby at CES MMA 33. You won the fight by highlight reel, fifth round KO via flying knee. Overall, how pleased were you with your performance in that fight? I, th- I, think, I think I did pretty good, you know. Uh, but I, I kind of definitely did better. You know, I gave him one round. You know, I didn't want to give him any rounds, but I gave him one round, you know what I mean? Only you will know what was going on in your mind going into the fifth round, but when I was watching the fight at home, from the outside looking in, it seemed like you would have been very disappointed had you not gotten a stoppage in that fight. Is that accurate? Would you have been disappointed if you weren't able to stop Cody in that fight? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I have, uh, my record is 10-3, uh, and three, and out of those 10 wins, I have nine uh, finishes. So I definitely like to finish finish guys, you know what I mean? Um, so there's no question about the fight, you know, especially Cody. I was telling everybody I was going to knock him out. I was going to tell everybody I was going to finish him. You know, he was talking a lot of shit. And that was my only goal, man. Make him make him sleep. And uh, rather, you know, I choked him out, knocked him out. But, uh, ooh, I knocked him out pretty good, man. So, uh, you know, I got my goal. Between rounds four and five, what exactly did your corner tell you to do going into that fifth round? Because... If Cody Norby didn't finish you in that fifth round or do enough to force a 10 8 and force a draw in the fifth round, you would have easily won a decision. It was clearly 3 1 going into that fifth round, and even if you lost the final round 10 9, it would have been 3 2 and you would have won a decision. So, what exactly did your corner tell you going into that fifth round? Because like you said earlier, you're a guy who's always looking for the kill. You're someone who's always going for the finish. So did they tell you, hey, just go out there, look for the finish, keep fighting the way you've been fighting, and just do you? Or did they tell you, hey, let's play it a little safer in this round. Let's try not to do anything crazy and just try to do enough to outpoint him and coast to a decision. What exactly did they tell you going into the fifth round, your corner, that is? What exactly did they tell you going into that fifth round? They just told me I was doing a good job going to the fifth round. You know, this is what champions are made of. And go out there and keep doing what you're doing. You know what I mean? Uh, they didn't tell me to play safe or anything. You know, they knew I was in the fight, but they just told me to keep doing what I'm doing. You know, I was beating up, beating him up the whole fight, and why would I stop? You know what I mean? So that was my plan in the fifth round: just keep beating him up like I was the whole fight. And um, he couldn't handle it; he ended up getting knocked out. How many times have you gone back and watched the fight? I probably watched it about three, three, four times, um, just to watch little things I could have done better mm-hmm. when I was in different positions, but. Um, yeah, I go back and watch it sometimes, you know. It feels good uh, being somebody like that, you know what I mean? Mm. He's a punk, so it felt good. <laughs> is the bad blood between you two guys, is that over with? I mean, I, I really don't know. I, I give him respect, you know. He's he's doing something that a lot of people can't do on a daily, you know what I mean? But, you know, he's, he 
them as people. They, they said a lot of messed up things about me, and I didn't say anything, you know. But um, obviously, I did my talking in the cage, and I'm going to talk now because I deserve the right to talk, you know. <laughs> and um, if he wants to say something, I can just be like, yo, I, I knocked you. I knocked you out cold, bro. Your head snapped onto the mat. Your mouth got fell off, fell off fell out of your mouth. You know what I mean? Like, so you know, the, I don't know if the bad blood's over. Honestly, he hasn't really said anything. He said he wanted a rematch, which is preposterous because I was whooping his ass that whole fight, uh, and I knocked him out cold. So um, you know, he's just one of those guys, man. He's just one of those guys that you just gotta brush off. You know what I mean? You gotta brush off and keep moving forward because he's not worth it. How much does it mean to you to have the CES MMA belt? Because you're a guy who's spent basically his entire career in CES. You have 13 pro fights, and 12 of them have come under the CES MMA banner. You started from the bottom, and now here you are at the top. There's a lot of guys, and nothing against CES MMA or these guys, but I look at someone like Chris Curtis... His first fight under the CES MMA banner was a title fight. They signed him to fight for the belt. You, on the other hand, you worked your way all the way from the bottom to the top to become champion, and now you you have the belt and, and everything's great. But a lot of regional shows traditionally won't have guys built from the ground up and have them fight for the title. Usually it's guys who fight there a few times, that's one side of the title picture. And then there's a guy who's signed specifically to fight for the title because maybe he's a local draw or he makes for a good style matchup against the guy who is the current title holder. You, like I said a couple times now, I'm sorry to keep rambling, but you truly have worked your way to the title. So it has to mean a lot more to you than some of these other guys who didn't work their way up. How does it feel to be the champion of CES, and how special is the belt to you? Uh, you know, the, the, the belt really is not, the belt is nice, you know what I mean, but the title itself of being a champion of CES, I know that I earned it. Like you said, I worked my way up. I've had my wins, I've had my losses, you know what I mean? So that title of me being the champion, uh, the first ever been to a champion for CES, that, that's huge for me, you know, that that's why I wanted to take this fight. I had a lot of other offers, you know, uh, people offered me more money for three rounds, but I wanted this fight, you know, not just for me, but I, I wanted it for my fans for my and my family because I think that they deserve to see me win a belt, you know. These people, they, they, pay, they pay 40 bucks, 75 bucks, 125 dollars each and every single time I fight, you know, I mean, they show my, they show their support to me all the time, either win or lose, they're always there, so I felt like I had to take this fight, I had to win this belt, and uh, win it for my people. Your pro mixed martial arts record is 10-3, and three. you have 9 finishes in your 10 wins, you're currently on a 2 fight win streak, you've won 3 out of your last 4 fights, and all 3 of those wins have been finishes. So you're doing very well. You're on a nice little streak here. Have you done enough in your mind? Have you done enough to get a call up to the UFC? Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I have more fights than a lot of guys in the UFC. I have more finishes. You know, um, I definitely think that I deserve a shot in the UFC. And um, I'm still waiting for you guys. So uh, give me a call. I'll be ready. When would you like to fight again? Um, I'm going through a lot of, uh, I just had a, a, a baby, uh, he's three months today actually, so, you know, I've been, I've been really cutting down a little bit on training and, you know, I've been waking up more in the middle of the night, feeding her, feeding my baby, you know, spending more time with my kids, uh, I also work, full-time job, mm-hmm. so I've been putting a little more time into my full-time job too, and, and I got a wedding coming up, man, you know, that's, that's not cheap, mm-hmm. so, I've been, I've been kind of just, Rebuilding my personal life again, you know what I mean? Because, you know, it's such a hard balance, you know. I could be a good fighter, and I could be a good uh, guy at work, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I suck at being a dad, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So um, I don't want to suck at being a dad, so I want to do everything I can to, you know, so, so when it's time to fight again, when it's time to go into camp, I could, you know, my kids will understand, my fiance will understand, and um, 
you know, probably July, August. That'll be cool. It'll be a little while, but, you know, it'll be good for me. Favorite food? Oh, I like all kinds of food, but I'm, I'm a pizza guy. I can always go for pizza, burgers, you know, simple American food like that. Well, Italian, but, you know, comfort food. Least favorite food? I can't really tell you. I like all kinds of food. Favorite TV show, and it can be a show currently on the air or a show no longer on the air. Just overall, favorite TV show? Game of Thrones, without a doubt. Favorite band and or solo artist? Um, I've always been a uh, Justin Timberlake fan my whole life. and um, So I really like Justin Timberlake. I also like J. Cole. I'm a huge, huge J. Cole fan. Hobbies outside of fighting? I used to have so many hobbies, man. So I had kids, bro. So my hobby is, you know, doing whatever my, my kids want to do, man. That's the best thing, you know. And if I do get some free time, you know, I used to play basketball when I used to live up north. That used to be my number one hobby. Now it's more like uh, like fishing and snorkeling. I love snorkeling, man. I love snorkeling. Yeah, that, that, that has been my favorite hobby, snorkeling. I love it. Especially in Florida. Ooh, some beautiful fish in the water. Celebrity people say you look like. <laughs> um, we yeah, this is what Asians look alike, but not this one, man. There's only one Asian sensation, so I don't really look like anyone. Yeah, yeah. You Hopefully, have... I'm a celebrity one day. Yeah, and you know, yeah. no one can look like me. You're absolutely right. You have a very unique look. No one really looks like you. Have you ever thought about doing any acting? Have you taken any acting classes? Is that something that you're interested in? Because I could see that. I could see you doing some TV or some movies or something like that. Is that is that something that you'd consider in the future? I did some theater arts in high school, man, for, for four years. Mm-hmm. Dance and theater arts. I loved it. I love, I'm a performer, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's why I, I love fighting because I'm not only fighting, you know, to fight some, to beat somebody up. I'm entertaining, man. I'm mm-hmm. entertaining a crowd. I'm, I'm entertaining people, you know, watching on TV, people that are there live. You know, you have mm-hmm. a chance to build a legacy for yourself, to, to have to build a following, to build a fan base. You know what I mean? So, um, I've never really tried acting or anything like that, but I, I'd definitely be open to it, man. Mm-hmm. I, if, if an opportunity came up, like, hey, we need, like, a an actor, Asian guy, or whatever, I'd definitely look into it. I'd definitely do it. Because I could see you on one of those shows, like, Arrow or Flash or fighting one of those guys. I could see you on that. <laughs> That's cool, man. Thanks. Appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Don't get my head too big now. <laughs> no, it's, it's true. It's true. I, I'm not saying anything that's not true. It, I'm saying what I'm seeing. So it, Appreciate it. Yeah, Appreciate yeah. it, man. I, I, could, I could see it for sure. Um, <laughs> besides fighting, what are you passionate about? Things change, man. When you, when you go out, your you know, your priorities change so much, you know what I mean? But um, I'm, I'm a family man, and that's number one, you know what I mean? I I got a beautiful family at home, you know, and I'm, I just try to do everything I can to, to make sure my, my family's okay, you know what I mean? So so right now, that that's that's what I'm, you know, that's, that's my biggest passion, man, just making sure my, my family's okay. Um, but I'm a passionate guy. It's funny that you asked that because everything I do, man, I'm uh, I'm very I'm very passionate. You know, I, I love the people that are in my life. You know, I love meeting new people. I love networking. You know, um, I just like keep keep keeping good relationship. You know, passionate guy. When's the wedding? It's in September, September twenty fourth. No, I have a big day. <laughs> <laughs> How many kids do you have, and what are their names, and what are their ages? Uh, I have two. I have three boys: Leandre, Benson, and Parker. Um, Benson is three and a half, and Parker is three months today. So, pretty cool. Do you have any pre-fight rituals or superstitions? I used to. I used to, but I don't anymore. I just go with the flow, man. I go with the flow. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, things don't always work out to your favor, especially when you go to a higher level. So little things don't matter. You know what I mean? I um, I don't. Do you have any post-fight rituals? Yeah, I do. I, uh, I always do something big for my family after the fight, you know. I go on a vacation or something nice. 
Besides fighting, you also work a second job. You work for a company called Green Arrow Marketing and Media. What exactly is your position at that company? I'm kind of like a... I'm the CEO. <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a business developer. You know, I go out and I meet people. I'm a networking guy. Um, I also handle some social media accounts that are under Green Arrow. You know, and I also um, manage the a- athlete brand. We have an athlete um, division in uh, Green Arrow, and uh, I manage that division. So, you know, I kind of do a little bit of everything here, you know. Let's say the UFC, they come in, they sign you, or maybe Bellator, they offer you a great deal and sign you. Whoever the highest bidder is basically comes in here, offers you a good contract. Are you looking to make fighting your full-time job? Is there some guys who, even when they get into the UFC or get into Bellator or get into a big show and and are getting paid very well to fight, they still continue to work a full-time job? Shane Carwin is a great example. He was still working full-time even though he was the interim UFC heavyweight champion. It, wow. Is that the plan? Is the plan for you to make fighting your full time gig? You know, what, Mike. Since I started, since I began, that's always been the goal to make full time to make me live comfortably, to make enough money from fighting to live comfortably. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And of course, when I just get signed to the UFC, let's say to the UFC, sure. what, what they're paying their uh, their fighters right now, you know, people just just getting signed. Even uh, three, four fights into the UFC, I don't think I can live off that just because I have a family. So I'll probably have to keep on. I'll probably have to keep working, even if the UFC signs me. But you know, uh, no complaints there, man, because I've always been a hard worker. So I know that if I want more money, I just have to win my fights. You know what I mean? I have to get people behind me. I have to. I have to build a fan base. I have to. Um, you know, I have, to, I have to treat people right, be a good role model so that people like me, you know? And, you know, that's not fake. That, that's just the real me. And um, I think that that's the key to, to, to building a fan base is being real, man, you know? And um, I think, you know, once, once it's all set, you know, I'll say I'm top 10 in the world one day, yeah, maybe I'll quit my job because <laughs> I'll be making more money. I'll have more money. But, you know, the base pay for the UFC right now, I'll probably have to keep my job. You have a tattoo on your right shoulder. What is that of? Oh, it's uh, actually says in loving memory of the Andre Sukumtut. It's actually um my first my firstborn. He passed away, so I have a tattoo of him. You know, his birthday and his um the day that he passed away. So oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What yeah, happened? You know, it's <clears throat> what happened? And that uh, you gotta live with. Um, he had a skin disease called uh, epidermolosis bullosa. Um, it's very rare. One out of every 500,000 babies get it. That was the ratio at that time. Um, called blood, um, yeah. You see me, you, know, you follow me on social media, sometimes I'll hashtag mm. EB awareness. Mm. You know, and, and that's where it is. Mm. You know, it's, okay. um, it's really okay. bad skin disease. Okay. I was going to ask you <clears throat> about that a little bit later, so that's what that means. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Well, that's uh, that's some pretty rough stuff. If you could stay one age forever, how old would you stay, and why? I would stay twenty-seven because I'm twenty-seven right now, and I feel like a lot of things are coming together in my life right now. You know, um, you know. Of course, there's always going to be struggle. You know, being being an upcoming fighter. You know, and stuff like that. Like what I explained to you before, you can't always work. You know. You can't always work like the big jobs, you know. You can't always like get promoted in a job just because you're a fighter. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You're always kind of on the on the on the bottom of the the ladder. But um, I feel like a lot of things are coming together for me uh, right now. You know, people finally getting to know my name because of that flying knee. And um, you know, I, it just it just feels right right now, man. I'm in I'm in Florida. I'm, I'm, I'm meeting a lot of new people. Um, Works good, family's good, everybody's healthy. I got two healthy boys. So I like, I really like this age, you know. I still look young right now. You know what I mean? I'm not going to look like this forever. You know, I still get to dress up. I'm still active. 27 is a great age. If you could trade places with anyone in the world for a week, who would you trade places with and why? Oof. <laughs> Man, Justin Bieber. Just having that talent. 
fun that kid has, man. Like, it'll be sick just like doing a concert one day with his talents and seeing all. Of that. I, I love fans, man. Like, even if you're not a fan of mine, like I, I just love seeing the reaction. I love going to concerts. Not only not not just to see the audience, but I like just looking around and being like, wow, this person got all these people together. And there's their main, their one, their main attention is this one person. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody's focused on one person, and I just, I just find that's that's power, man. That that's that's it's pretty cool. You know what I mean? I wouldn't mind being the beeps. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite social media platform? You know, I, <laughs> since I do social media so much all day at work now, it's like. I um I don't get sick of it, but I just don't have enough time to update my own as much as I'd like to. But um, Instagram's really cool, you know. I get a lot of follow- I don't have as many followers as I'd like to, but you know, all my friends and family, you know, that's a good way to expose yourself. My Facebook fan page, my you know, my Facebook. But I like Snapchat, man, because um. Snapchat is more private, man. You know what I mean? Everything else is open, but Snapchat is a little more private. You can accept who you want to see uh, what's going on in your personal life, you know, when you're snapping. And uh, I like Snapchat. And I like, you know, people that I care about because, you know, I have all my friends, a lot of my friends and my family in Rhode Island. So I like to see what they're up to on a daily basis sometimes and what they're up to, what they're doing. Maybe there's an event that I usually go to, but I can't because I live in Florida now. So I like Snapchat. It's, it's cool. Website you visit most often? I do a lot of shopping, but I do a lot of imaginary car shopping. <laughs> <laughs> so I go, uh, I, we work for a company called uh, um, uh, uh, Greco. So I'm always on the Greco Automotive um, website just looking at cars. Say, oh, I'm gonna get this one. I'm gonna get this one, knowing that you know I really I can't get one right now. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm always in, I'm always going on I'm always on car websites, man. Just looking at different cars. Piece of technology you can't live without. That's my phone. You know what I mean, that's your phone has everything. If you could go on a one million dollar shopping spree at any store, what store would you go on that one million dollar shopping spree at? Oh, dang! Probably Best Buy. I don't have technology, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. What's the best thing that ever happened to you? I have to say my, you know, I'm not trying to be sweet. or um, My fiance, man, because um, if it wasn't for her, none of this would be possible, bro. You know, like, I was, uh, this my story, man. Uh, I should have been, I should have been in college. I should have been playing sports in college, you know, but then I meet her. You know, we end up having a baby, end up having to work, you know, and then having to find a hobby, and I found MMA. So she's definitely the best thing that happened to me. And, you know, besides the MMA part, man, she's she's just, she's a good person. She's great to me. She's one of my kids, best mother I can ever ask for, so mm-hmm. has to be her. Mm-hmm. What sport were you planning on going to college for? Soccer. Oh, soccer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What's your pet peeve? I, I kind of have ODC, uh, OCD, but like um, clean, cleanliness sometimes, but not like like my own, like my own house. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I don't really care where, where else I am because you know I I wasn't brought up in the I was I didn't grow up in the in the in the suburbs in the best neighborhoods either. But um, since since like I have kids now and stuff. I have, I have like a little bit of OCD at the house. <laughs> it's not good. Let's say you found a magic lamp and you rubbed that magic lamp, and a genie appeared. And the genie said he was going to grant you three wishes. What would those three wishes be? Oh man! Um, of course, I wish for some money. You know what I mean? Sure. <laughs> because money isn't everything, but it's security. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, money, money does solve a lot of problems. So I wish for some money. Um, a lot, a lot of things, bro. Um, <clears throat> not material stuff, you know. If I can see some people that I lost uh, again, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'd love to see them again. Just have a conversation with them. You know, friends, my son. You know, family. Just things like that. 
some people are afraid of spiders, some people are afraid of heights, some people are afraid of the dark. What are you afraid of? I used to be afraid of like, adrenaline, like roller coasters and stuff like that. I kind of still am, but I'll still go on them. But, you know, just having that fear that you don't have that control of your life. You know what I mean? Even if I'm in a car with somebody and they're driving kind of crazy, like, I get anxiety sometimes. Mm-hmm. So things like that, I get, I get worried, you know? But, you know, when I'm on my two feet, I'm not really afraid of anything. Best advice you were ever given through life and best advice you were ever given through fighting and who gave it to you? One of my friends, he, um, you know, I used to train people. I used to run a gym. And one of my friends, he was just like, yo, man, I lost three fights in a row at that time. And he was just like, yo, he's like, quick care about everybody else, man. You know, you, you got such a big heart and you care about everybody else, but you got to start worrying about yourself, you know? And ever since that, I, uh, I kind of did that. I put more time into myself, mm-hmm. into my own training, into my own goals, you know, mm-hmm. um, helping myself get better every day instead of other people. And um, it brought me pretty far. And it brought me here, man. But without that advice, who knows where I'd be? Seriously, it's crazy. It made me think different. What do you worry about? What's something that keeps you up at night? Oh, man, I always worry about my kids, you know. I wake up in the middle of the night just to make sure um, my sons uh, are okay sometimes, you know? Like, it's just, I worry about my brothers, my sister, you know, back in Rhode Island because I know that I'm the, big, I'm the oldest brother, you know, so I can't always be there for them, you know, to protect them or to, to give them rides anyway. So I worry, I worry about things like that a lot. And it's kind of crazy, but I, I do. What's your porn star name? If you combine your childhood pet with the street you grew up on, what's your porn star name? <laughs> Bucky Ruckles. Ruggles. <laughs> <laughs> My dog's name was Bucky. <laughs> what's your hidden talent? My hidden talent? People don't know that uh, I can sing and dance a little, you know? <laughs> people don't know that, but I'm okay. I'm not, I'm not too bad. Person you look up to the most? I look up to my, my parents, you know what I mean? They, they gave me life, they raised me. I respect them a lot for that. Uh, but there's so many people that I look up to, honestly, like, for different reasons, you know what I mean? There could be people that are successful, people that are good people, you know, just things like that. But I'll say my parents. Time period you'd like to go back and visit, and why? I wish I could go back into high school again, and, um... I played basketball in high school for four years. I, I wish I wrestled. Because I'd be like, I'd be top 10 in the world right now. I mean, I don't, it's not that I don't believe that I'm top 10 in the world, but people would know that I'm top 10 in the world. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it's all right. Mm-hmm. Climb my way up. Number one thing on your bucket list? Uh, I like traveling. You know what I'm saying? And I always want to go to Chicago. Because I watch a show called Chicago Fire and Chicago PD mm-hmm. and Chicago Med. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we show it downtown. So I was, randomly, I was just like, yo, I want to go to Chicago one day. That would be cool if I can go to Chicago. I can go to Chicago mm-hmm. in July. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Maybe that's a sign. Maybe that's what this is all building up to. <laughs> if you could change one thing about the world, what would you change and why? Probably, probably racism, man, because... um. People judging other people, man. This is not cool. People shouldn't be judged. They should be judged upon character, not looks. Andre, last question. Let's say you were on death row and about to be executed. What would your last meal be? And I need an entree, a dessert, and a beverage. What would your last meal be? A beer, a New York strip, some good potatoes, mashed potatoes in my New York strip. And for my dessert, I'd probably have a nice time with Sue. Andre, real quick before I let you go, do you have any sponsors you'd like to thank, and is there anything you want to say to the fans? Oh, yeah, I, you know, I've had so many people help me out throughout my career, you know. Um, you guys know who you are, man. But, uh, you know, I would, people sponsoring me now is like um, Green Arrow, Marketing and Media, uh, 27 North Paddles um, and, and Greco Automotive Group 
Forgive me, anybody. I'm sorry. You know, Blackstone's out of construction. Titan Pooch. Uh, Barber Boulevard. Man, there's a lot of, there's a lot of people. Um, what, 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 what was the other question? Oh, my fans. Oh, man, they know I love them, man. They know I love them. If you're not a fan yet, you come on. Jump on the bandwagon, baby. Because we about to blow up. Andre, thank you for taking the time to talk. I really appreciate it.